My thanks to Hotclick Marketing for supporting this video. For more information, go to their website. Well, this is the seventh and final Main Road Memories video that I've put together. Thanks to everybody who's contributed to the previous six. If you haven't seen them, then check them out. In this one, it's a batch of fans, though it does conclude with Bernard Holford's wife, Karen Holford, telling me a couple of funny stories about her husband, uh, Bernard, of course, passed away in 2019. So make sure you stay watching right till the end. Um, thanks very much, of course, to my sponsors who've helped me uh, throughout the process of putting these together. I hope you enjoy them as much as I did, as I say. Main Road, what a great place. Anyway, let the memories begin again. I'm going to start at the beginning when we got on the train, which was a steamer in Earlstown, Newton Will Owls, in the late 50s to Exchange Station, me and me mate. And then we used to walk it to Piccadilly, Market Street, and call it the UCP Cafe, and have something to eat, steak pudding, chips and peas or something. And then after that, it lasted about an hour, the time we'd had a look round, walked it towards the dental hospital, to Moss Side, Main Road, and stood outside with all the crowd, where the coach come. I said to me mate, that looks like Bert Trotman walking up here. I think he got out of a taxi, I'm not sure. So I said to me mate, go and, John, go and ask him for a couple of tickets. I said, here, here's my 10 bob and your 10 bob. And I'm not going, he said, I'm not going. I said, I'll give you money, I'll go. So I was that desperate to get in, I thought. I'll have to go. So I'm waving these two 10 shilling notes at Bert Trotman, who was a gigantic man. I'm like really looking up at him. And he looked down on me and I thought he was going to say, uh, I can't do anything for whatever. And he said, put your money away. And I went, oh. So I put my money away. He said, follow me. So we just followed him. And I didn't know where he was going, I thought, you know. Anyway, he didn't take us in the player's entrance. There's a big gate at the side where the turnstiles are, at the front of the club. And the gate was open with a guy on. And he just turned around, looked at us, waved us on with his head. He was saying, come on. And he just said to the guy on the gate, these are with me. And in we went, free. And went all the way home, walking all the way back with 10 bob extra in our pocket. What a great day that was. We've all got memories of favourite games, favourite players scoring, favourite goals, King Cladsey against Southampton being mine. Uh, but main road for me was always a bit more personal than that. Um, in 1974, December, just before Christmas, uh, me and my two brothers, we went to um, watch uh, City uh, Home to Wolves and I was 11. And it was the only game that myself and my two brothers uh, went to together. I was the youngest of three. Uh, sadly, my oldest brother passed away in 1980. So that's the only game we went to together. We sat on, uh, there was that wall sort of in the middle of the Kipax, around the length of the wall, sorry, le length of the terrace. And uh, there was like a bar on top or a barrier and kids could sit on there. So that, that's what we did there. Um, also, my mum grew up in Moss Side, a very short throw, stone's throw away from the ground. And uh, I'm going to share with you, uh, through modern technology, um, just some magic moments um, that my mum grew up with, um, being at City as well. So this is Main Road when it was built in 1923. And if I just take you a little bit zooming in, you can see this huge big building there. Um, and that is the, well it's this building here, it's the Claremont ABC. So that stood um, of what most of us would know opposite the City Chippy became a car park uh, for the school uh, playing field as well and uh, my mum she actually lived on a row of these houses at the back of the of the movie theater and also um, she went to Claremont uh, Infant and Junior School here and then my mum's auntie Esther this is Kipak Street here the uh, the white line and my mum's auntie Esther and her family lived on the second house up um, the Kipak Street from the Claremont Road Junction um, on the pitch uh, my overriding memory was uh, Geo King Cladsey's jinxing run against Southampton 
uh, where he took it past the, the Saints team and, and dinked it over the keeper. Um, I was always amazed at the time because I'm sure it won BBC Match of the Day's um, Goal of the Month um, competition, which was just unheard of from a, um, a City player at that time. And, and we always thought, wow, what a player we've got. And, and he was a great player uh, for us uh, during those times. Um, another memory that I know is shared by a lot of City fans is uh, Gota's double against United. Um, in particular, that goal, uh, which was helped along by uh, Gary Neville. Um, you know, Gary Neville became an absolute uh, City legend that day, and uh, I don't think he will forget it, and, and certainly neither will I. Um, I loved Keegan's swashbuckling um, Division One or Championship winning season that year. We we beat everybody in our sights, and and. Um, you know, to get, I think, 99 points was just, just fantastic. My main road memory is from February the 25th, 1989. I was ball boy that day against Plymouth Argyle. I'd put my name down a couple of months earlier at a Junior Blues meeting, so was anxiously waiting for the phone call. When it came the Thursday before the match, I was so excited. I remember I had to be there by about one o'clock and I'd actually deliberately turned up at half 12 just to make sure I was definitely not going to be late that day. Gave my name to the security guard on the door at the um, players entrance at Main Road and was took through to meet the um, guy who ran the ball boys that was Peter Fletcher um, obviously put my tracksuit on really excited at this point and we were given balls which we had to take into the home and away dressing rooms to get the place to sign and then it was out doing the warm up and just seeing Main Road fill up but from a totally different point of view obviously on the pitch side and that it was magical to me at 11 years old the game itself I really enjoyed, but what sticks in my mind was it was the night Bruno fought Tyson for the first time. So the Kipax and the Platte Lane end were both singing Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. In the end, City won 2-0 and it was just a fantastic day. I mean, I remember my mum had said she'd pick me up about half past five after the game finished. So I was stood outside, obviously, for about 20 minutes once I'd got changed and cleaned down and that. And all the players were coming out, so I got loads of autographs. So I was really made up. It was the perfect day for a young blue. And it was something, I did do a few reserve games, but nothing will ever, ever take away the memory of that fantastic day. My granddad lived on Claremont Road. Obviously, for those who, who don't necessarily know, it was, you know, the, the other road that was Main Road and Claremont Road. And um, as a kid, uh, mostly every Saturday, my dad would um, take me and my sister up there to go and visit him. And um, we'd, we'd, we don't necessarily always go to the football because we were too young, but we'd hear it and we'd hear the crowd, we'd see the crowds and, you know, we'd hear the noise and we'd know when they scored. Um, and, and it also served as another purpose because uh, Main Road used to be a venue for concerts. Concerts. So I've got memories of being sort of playing on the grass outside, listening to Queen and listening to David Bowie. You know, these amazing gigs that as a little girl I would have never have got in, but just sitting at, at Grandad's, it was just all there. It was like having it on the radio, you know, and hearing the crowd singing. And it was something about that crowd. It's a crowd noise, isn't it? You know, which is, uh, you know, what, what we talk about, about all this behind closed door stuff. Um, so me personally, uh, it's something thing that I did with my dad um, you know I think a, a lot a, a lot of guys would love a son and would love to play football with a son and, and he got me he got this girl and um, you know I wasn't very good at football or anything but I loved going to the football so as a little girl I used to go all over we'd go to Boundary Park um, we'd go uh, I'm sorry I'd go to the red side with my uncle uh, you know but my dad always took me to Main Road and um I always felt safe because as a little girl when it was just the stands and they weren't seats you know I'd be, I'd be mobbed um and my dad always made me feel really safe and he put me on his shoulders whatever so I could always see and that went on and on through my teenage years we never went dead frequently he had his own season ticket and he dragged me along every now and again and um you know, occasionally we'd sit, we'd sit stand, we'd be behind the goal whenever like the ball had come. He he was like a kid. You know, he was trying like jump for the ball. And I remember one time he actually nearly knocked me out jumping for this ball. I think it was against Reading at one particular year. Um, but you know what everyone else has said really, it was that atmosphere of being a real sort of. I'm not I'm not sure I want to use the word working class. 
but just a real football team you know with real passionate people fans and and my people you know I'm a Mancunian I'm, I'm from three miles out of the city centre of Manchester um, and it just felt like home and the club always made it feel like home so even though they might have lost a lot of matches back in the day it always felt it it, it was okay you know yeah you were disappointed of course you wanted to win stuff but you'd had a really great day out, you know, and you'd see people that were around you even before season tickets, you all used to stand in a similar group or, you know, with the same people. Um, and, um, you know, I found a ticket the other day. <laughs> it's quite funny. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you can see it, <laughs> but I was looking through my ticket box and it, uh, it was against QPR and it's in the Kipax. Oh, it's 14th of May, 1995. 11 pound. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that much now, though. It's not that, <laughs> they've not put the prices up that much, have they? <laughs> Everybody knows Bernard was a, a workaholic. He worked very hard. He lived for Man City. And um, I used to go away to Turkey quite a lot and leave him, as, as everybody will know. And um, anyway, he went to, decided to go to the caravan with um, Mike Davis, who was also on the County FA with him. And they decided to take a pizza. So they thought that was easy. They put it in the oven, nothing happened. And they're wondering why. And they said, well, it's not on, it's not hot. They couldn't do it, didn't know how to do it. So they end up going through my toolbox because Bernard wasn't uh, a bit domesticated. <clears throat> and they sawed the pizza in half and, and not took the cling film off and put it in the microwave which then ruined the microwave they had to go out and get fish and chips because that he was the world's worst husband as far as domesticity <laughs> I can't even say that uh, he just wasn't domestic at all I, I basically used to wait on him hand and foot and loved every minute of it we're all good at what we're good at so I, I do believe in that and another tale was we went to the summer ball uh, of the FA uh, where we really, really used to in enjoy that. And um, towards the, uh, we've had the meal and then the group comes on. So we up oh, dance and I, I absolutely love to dance. Took flat shoes with me so there'd be no accidents. Great. Halfway through uh, the evening, I fell back because Bernard didn't catch me I fell back and uh, off a little ledge bounced on both arms and, and literally broke both my arms so we spent the most of the night in the hospital local hospital and then um, we ca came back and I said Do you go and get your breakfast I said it I can't go to breakfast I, I don't know how to do anything plus I I couldn't get dressed myself so uh, he went and had breakfast and then he came back and he um, he said, I brought you some tea and toast. I said, lovely. And Kieran, he put it next to the bed and about 10 minutes after he'd come out of the bathroom, he said, don't you want it? And I said, well, I can't actually eat it. I can't pick anything up. So he fed me toast and gave me tea. We eventually come home um, and it, it was just an absolute nightmare and the kids were brilliant and I just said to Bernard do you think I could have a banana I said I, I, I'm a bit hungry really and he went yeah of course we got a banana he didn't peel it so where, where your hand is actually curved like that he stuck the banana there, there and, and just let me get on with it and again he came back and said well don't you want it I said Bernard peel it for me please you know so uh, but uh, yeah so many tales about him because he wasn't domesticated i mean uh, it was so bad that at one stage he was going i was going away and i'd always left all his pies that i'd made in the freezer and meals and everything and he said well just before you go will you show me how to use the toaster it's like one finger he went right i've got it now i've got it now so as you can see he wasn't a very domesticated man just thought that story might um give you a bit of a laugh 
My mum has another claim to fame. Uh, I'm sure I've, I've, I know I've heard a lot of other people's main road memories and uh, there's a lot of the uh, mind your car for you mister stories. Well, my mum predates mind your car for you mister. She actually minded people's bikes. So she and her friends had a little paper sign uh, on the street of Claremont Road saying, uh, we'll mind your bike. And she made a little pocket money uh, watching people's bikes during the game. She actually went into the game. Uh, she said she very rarely watched the game. She was only nine or 10, but they would look up when there was a goal scored. Uh, but they would play hide and seek amongst the crowd and then she would race back before the game ended uh, waiting to hand everybody their bike back so it's my mum and her friends that generation that you can blame for the uh, whatever happened to your car when you didn't pay 50p for your car to be minded um, anyway thanks very much for letting me share that sadly my mum died last year and I did show her those pictures a while back and she was really pleased to see it brought back a lot of memories for her and I hope it did for people uh, watching now. Big shout out to the three companies that have supported the products that I put out under the Forever Blue title throughout the year, the podcast and the vlogs. See you all soon.